Hi, this is Ms. McCahan, and we're going to talk about similar polygons on this video. Please take notes on your own um, paper that I gave you as I go through this video. So when we talk about similar polygons, we're talking about any kind of polygon that has corresponding angles that are congruent and corresponding sides that are proportional. So what do we mean by that? Well, remember congruent angles, we're talking about like angle A would be congruent to angle H, angle B would be congruent to angle I, and so on. So these corresponding, so what we mean by corresponding is they match up. So angle B and angle I match up. They're in the same relative position. So their sides being proportional means that we want those sides, obviously these are not congruent, right? AB is not congruent to HI. But if we want them to be proportional, we want them to equal the same ratio if I reduce all of those. So we're going to write a statement of proportionality. And here's what that looks like. So I'm going to write every uh, side over here in this small quadrilateral, I'm going to write in the numerator. And every uh, side over here in this larger quadrilateral, I'm going to write in the denominator. So AB corresponds to HI, and that gives me the ratio of 2 over 3. Now if I do the same thing with BC and IJ, that would give me 4 over 6. Now if I reduce 4 over 6, then that gives me 2 thirds. So, so far so good, 2 thirds is the same as the original ratio of 2 thirds. And then I'm going to do the same thing now with 10 and 15. Those are the next corresponding sides. So 10 over 15 reduces to, if I divide both of those by 5, I would get 2 over 3 again. And then my last pair of sides is going to be 6 over 9. So if I write those as a ratio, 6 over 9, and reduce both of them, I can divide both of those by 3, and I would get 2 over 3. So this is my statement of proportionality. All of these pairs of sides reduces to a ratio of 2 thirds. And because those ratios are all the same, we can say that the scale factor of these two quadrilaterals is two-thirds. So now that I know that these uh, sides are proportional and those angles are congruent, I can write a similarity statement. I can say that quadrilateral ABCD is similar to HIJK. Notice this little squiggle means similar. So anytime they ask you to write a similarity statement, they want you to uh, write the letters in the corresponding order, just like we did with congruent triangles. The order of the letters matters. So let's do an example. So we're going to see, are these two triangles similar? And if they are, we're going to write a similarity statement and we're going to state the scale factor. So in order to answer this first question, are the two triangles similar, we need to see if all of the angles are congruent and then the sides are proportional. So notice that M is congruent to P, L is congruent to T. So since this is a triangle, we know that that third angle will also be congruent. So I'm going to mark that congruent. N and O will be congruent to each other. And then we need to look at the sides. Now remember, the sides aren't going to be congruent. They're going to be proportional. So I'm going to find the smallest side in this small triangle and compare it to the smallest side in this triangle. So I'm going to create a proportion of 4.5 over 6. That's a ratio. And we're going to see, is that going to be equal to, let's look at the middle size side. So in here, that's 6. That's the middle size. And we're going to compare that to the middle size over here, 8. So 6 over 8, we're going to see if 6 over 8 is the same ratio as, then we go to the biggest side, 9 over 12. So we need to know, are those actually equal to one another? So just get your calculator out, and since this is a decimal inside of a fraction, just divide it. So if I do 4.5 divided by 6, I get 0.75, right? Or you can write that as the fraction of 3 fourths. And then you could reduce 6 over 8 to be 3 fourths, or you can divide that in your, frac in your calculator again and get 0.75. Same thing with 9 twelfths. You'll get 0.75. So are these similar? 
Yes, they are. So our answer to that first question is yes, they are similar. And because these all came out to be 0.75, that's going to be our scale factor. So our scale factor is right here, 0.75. So I'm going to point to that right here. All right, so now that we know that these two triangles are similar, and we know their scale factor, we need to write a similarity statement. That's when we use this little squiggle. So we need to make sure that we are naming the triangles in a proper order. So if I list that smaller triangle, triangle OPT, I need to go in that same order. So what should come first in the second triangle? Well, that should be N, N, M, L. And make sure you write a, a squiggle, not a congruent, because these are just similar. They're not congruent to each other. Let's do some more examples. So first, let's look at this set of pentagons. All right, remember, pentagons are just five-sided figures. And it's telling us that CDFGH is similar to JKLMN. So there, we already know these are similar, and they want us to find the value of x. So if these are similar to each other, then their sides are proportional. So I'm going to create a proportion. I'm going to use x. It's going to correspond to 2, so I'm going to make x over 2, one of my ratios. And then 9 is going to correspond to 6. So I'm going to create, say that that's equal to 9 over 6. So remember, when we solve a proportion, we're going to cross multiply. When we cross multiply, I'm going to get 6x is equal to 18. And then when I solve, I'm going to divide by 6, and I get x equals 3. So this side right here is 3. All right, so try this one on your own. See if you get it correct. So the proportion you should have set up is x over 20 equals 9 over 12. And then when you solve that proportion, you should get 12x equals 180, and then x equals 15. So one more thing I need to let you know is that if two polygons are similar, then their scale factor also represents the ratio between their perimeters. So that's very, very important. The scale factor is the equal to the perimeter ratio. So if I added up all the sides of a figure, that's going to be the same scale factor as if I add up all the sides of this figure. Okay, so this perimeter and this perimeter should be in the same ratio as just one single side and another single side. So in this set of problems, we are first going to find the scale factor of FK, I'm sorry, FGHJK. Oh, that's a, that's a tongue twister right there. So we're going to find the scale factor of the big one to the little one. Now, because they told us a specific scale factor, we can't just pick which one we want to do. We have to go from big to little. So when we set up our ratio, I need to put the big number in the numerator and the small number in the denominator. So let's do that one first. So for number four, we are going to set up the proportion of, now notice that the only number I have in the small one is the 10. So I have to match it up with the side over here. So that's 10 and 15 matched together. But I need to make sure I put the 15 in the numerator and the 10 in the denominator because I'm making a scale factor from big to little. So I need to go big to little. Also make sure you reduce. We can reduce both of these by dividing by 5. So my scale factor here is going to be 3 halves. So this big pentagon, is that a pentagon? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yes, pentagon. That big pentagon is 3 halves as big as this small pentagon. All right, so now we need to find the value of x, x right here. So we need to find the value of this side. This side is going to correspond to this 18 side. So we're going to make a proportion like we did in the previous example. So we're going to make 8, x over 18 is equal to 10 over 15. So all you have to do is cross multiply. That's going to give you 15x equals 180. And then divide to give you x equals 12. So this side right here is going to be equal to 12. Now, finally getting to the new step, the perimeter. So we need to find the perimeter of this small pentagon. So the first thing we need to do is to figure out what 
the perimeter of this big pentagon is. So we're going to add up all those sides. All right, so the perimeter of the big pentagon, if I add all those up, it gives me 69. And remember what we said, the perimeter of the big pentagon is going to be proportional to the perimeter of the small pentagon in that same ratio as their scale factor. So remember, our scale factor was 3 halves. So I know that perimeter of the big pentagon is 69. I don't know the perimeter of the small pentagon, but I know that that ratio is going to be equal to 3 halves. So again, I have a question mark instead of an x, but it means the same thing. It's an unknown value. So I'm going to cross multiply 3 times question mark is equal to 69 times 2, which is 138. So if I divide both sides by 3, I'm going to get that question mark is equal to 46. So the perimeter of that small pentagon is simply 46. So go back and look at that and make sure you understand that. And we will continue working with similar polygons in future lessons.